Hi everyone, it's Desert Rose. This is going to be a quick video of me showing some decks that I will be selling or trading. I'll post this video on my personal channel as well as my reading channel. And I'll also mention the decks that I'm interested in at the end of the video and I'll list those things below as well as the decks that I have up for trade. I may add some decks in the description box if I forgot anything or if I'm weighing some things out and then I confirm that I am going to put it or will be trading it. So if you want to look at the description just in case you can do that too. So the first one is going to be the Star Tarot which is a beautiful deck. I actually have the book out of the box and it's by Kathy McClayland it's beautiful artwork but I I mainly got it for the Native American images because they're gorgeous but I don't quite connect with the other images so Unfortunately, it doesn't get used. This has more of a cosmic energy to it, a uh, celestial, and this. These are the backs. It's a shipper published deck. I believe Red Feather Shipper Publishing. So they're usually the size of Oracle cards in thick lamination. I have seen people cut off the borders, so you might connect with it better if you did that. I didn't think I would connect with the without the borders as much, so I kept them on. And I also kept them away because I just didn't feel like they were calling to me. At least at this time, I do have quite a deck, um, quite a few decks that I'm working with right now, and that I have acquired recently. So I might not trade right away. But it won't be a long time. I'll just uh, I'll respond right away. But I'll reserve the decks with um if you guys are interested in it. So that was the first one. She originally just had the major arcanas, which interesting interestingly enough they had smaller borders which I feel like a lot of people were expecting until they saw the deck so the next one I actually got in a trade but I'm not going to be working with it anytime soon so this is the Journey Oracle. You can find this Oracle on Etsy. I know there's another Oracle with the same name too, but it's the one that has this image on it. So these are sh the shapes and they're double-sided. I haven't really looked into them that much besides my first card draw. So the book, I love when they come in books like this and it's nice and hefty it offers a lot of information there's stories in it it's very well written so because I, I did read some of it i'm hoping that people will really get 
some use out of this because it feels like a very soulful deck and a deck that you would meditate on with this type of imagery. Sorry. I didn't even use these in any readings. So that was the second one. The third one is another one that I got in a trade, and it, I, it's actually my second copy. So I don't need this copy. The person that I traded with made this beautiful bag. I actually wanted it mainly for the bag too. So in here is the New Orleans Voodoo Tarot. I wanted a second copy because I loved my first one so much. But I'm not sure if it's because it's from a different country that it was a different cardstock. So this one is more glossier. Um, it's more glossy. It's, a, it's more plasticky. I'm not sure. But my other one is matte. And I connected with that one. So I'll just hang on to that one and I'll trade this one. But this one comes with a book, so um, these are one of my favorite backings. It's so beautiful. So I love reading with this one. It's an amazing reader. I. I'll show you guys the book. I, well, my first copy didn't come with the book. I actually was fine without it because some of, most of my practice stems from diasporic religions, so it wasn't a problem for me. But one of my other friends that has this deck says that it's um, very helpful for her and she likes the book. So the third one is, this is the 1990s version of the Medicine Woman Tarot. I opted for the older version. The tuck box is unfortunately coming apart, but I will be putting it in something else so the cards don't um, go all over the place when I'm sending it. So this is the box. It has softer muted colors and the colors are less saturated. I heard the guidebook to this is amazing. And these are the backs. You can really see the saturation in the design in the middle. Uh, if you compare both of them, I did have both of them at one time and then I traded the, the mass produced one. So the mass produced one's still easily accessible. You can, you can get it. I actually got mine from a shop. So I know a lot of people love this deck, but I have a deck that is my shamanic deck so I'm thinking that that's why I didn't connect with this one as much it's a beautiful reader it's so gentle it's definitely a healing deck a deck that you can meditate on and the yellows in here are amazing if you get the mass produced one the yellows are really intense and I didn't, it, it wasn't for me, so that's why I got this one. And I love the colors in here. So, you, you get an older feel out of this deck. Shuffles beautifully. The, the deck is nice and matte and smooth. Um, buttery cardstock. So, it's amazing when you hold it. It's a very friendly deck, user-friendly deck. So the next ones are in the same bag, but I'll show them separately. They, they go together. They're not by the same person, 
but uh, the first one I'm going to show, I'll show the tarot deck first, which is a self-published deck. Now this deck has really, really thick lamination, and I need to change this bag. Um, but I'll give you guys another bag when you get it. So this deck is called the Hazel Moon's Hawaiian Tarot. So basically this woman moved to Hawaii and she created this deck. This is her and she created this deck uh, based on her experiences there and there is some historical value to this. There's monumental um, Well, there's there's monuments in this deck or well-known places Some practices teachings. So these are the backs. As I said, they're heavily laminated, but they're good if you're going to bring them to the beach. I felt I found that really helpful. And funny enough, I got these both in a trade from the same person, except at different times. So the, um, the miners are more scenic. And if you recognize symbolism and the meanings behind certain things, then it, it'll be a beautiful read for you. I really like it, but I just don't use it a lot. So the pictures are painted by the creator. And the book is super interesting too. So this is in more of a used condition. There might be creases here and there. But she doesn't create this deck anymore, or she doesn't publish it anymore. So if you're getting this, uh, I I know the rest of the decks that she has left that are being sold. Um, the money is being donated to. Um, I'm I'm not exactly sure. I, I read that up a while ago, but. If you're interested, this is the book. It's very informative and it tells you different information about the places in the deck. Especially for this time of the year, um, depending on where you are, it, it might be great for you. So this next one, it had a box, but when I moved, when I moved, um, I left the box in uh, the in my brother's apartment because that's where I was staying for a while so I don't have the box right now but this is an oracle deck it's harder to find just because um, sometimes they only give you the book and it's not for an oracle deck I don't think it's the cheapest one either but then again I got it from a trade so these are the deck, um, the, well, it's the deck and these are the backs. They have such a beautiful color to them. So the book is super informative. Both these books are highlighted, by the way. And I really love the messages. There's so much lore into it. Like Mo, the lizard card. It's so beautiful.
so. They have a beautiful cardstock to them. They're nice and matte. So those are the two um, Hawaiian decks. And those were it for my decks that I would like to sell or trade. So the decks that I'm interested in are mainly the first one is the Tarot of the Nymphs. It's a mass market, low scarab bayo deck. So I really wanted to try that one out. I feel like it would really be I usually get the ma um, the self-published decks before getting the mass produced just because I want to make sure that I get it before they discontinue the deck uh, from the creators. And I really think it'll be something that'll, uh, that deck will be a, an important part of my collection. So if I get it, I'll go more into it on my personal channel. The next one is the Czech Shadowscapes Tarot. Because I do have the English version, but with the Czech version, it's larger images. And um, funny enough, I could read the Russian even though I I heard that the Russian wouldn't be if you look at um, the cards you can see what the card is but I thought that it would be a really cool one to have and also because I use the shadow escapes quite frequently uh, I mainly use fairy decks so if I don't mention if you have a deck that it's more fairy based and I don't have it, I'll probably be interested in it. In it. And if um, you guys want to uh, have, if you have a deck that you would like to trade, but you aren't interested in certain decks that I have, I do have more decks that I could trade. But these are the ones that I know for sure that I'm trading. So the next one is a test run for me because I, I'm not sure how I'll react to it. It's the Mystic Fairy Tarot. Um, Having that said, I did watch Lavender Moon, and she does uh, have, well, she does talk about that deck quite a lot, and um, the way that she talks about it and the way that she goes into the cards and the interpretations, it really drew me in, so now I'm curious about it. So uh, there's another spectrum of decks. I love Lucy Cavendish's decks. So the number one deck that I'm interested in is the Fairy Tale Fairy Tale Oracle. I love that deck. I would really like to try it out. I know I'm gonna love it. Um, I just have a strong feeling because I've always felt connected to it. So that would be I mean the number one of the Oracle decks that I'm interested in. Um, another one of Lucy Cavendish's decks is the Oracle of Mermaids because I have the Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle by the same artist, so I feel like it's more of completing um, that part of my collection as the tarot collector that I am, and I don't have a, a mermaid oracle deck. So I'm really curious because currently, uh, well, before I move back up north, I am in the south and I'm near water, but I'm not using any uh, mermaid based decks so I'm really curious about that deck and I heard so many good things about it so this one I'm just gonna make it short because I don't think I'm gonna pronounce it correctly um, only I'm gonna pronounce it like this because my brother was in the play so the Les Mis Oracle deck by Lucy Cavendish and I the when I see the images and I see the uh, interpretations that she has or like the phrases written at the bottom it really connects to me and it's one of those um, aesthetically darker decks that I feel like I will connect to because I have a tendency of doing that um, 
compared to the aesthetically lighter decks. And the last one that I have on my list, but I may do, I may add more on my list when I'm posting this trade is the Beautiful Creatures Tarot, the second edition. I do have the first edition, but I'm really curious about some of the cards. I have looked through a couple of walkthroughs and I'm really into the edging, which I'm not usually too fond of edging um, or gilded edge edges because um, it, it depends what it is, but I'm more of a toned down type of color or person in terms of color. So I'm, I haven't seen edging like that and I think that it's really, uh, I can't think of a word besides like spunky. It's like this pinkish toned color. It's not like a rose gold, although I love rose gold. It's more of a, I don't know if it's a hot pink, but it's because it's not that bright, but it's more of a toned down bright pink, and I love uh, feminine colors like that, but in a more like BA way. So if I make any updates, you guys can see the updates in the description box again. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.